So, hi, my name is Julie. I'm an engineer from Microsoft. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between ARM and Terraform and Pulumi in 2021. So this was a question submitted by a subscriber after um, they read my article about best practices with Terraform and Azure Pipelines. And uh, they said, well, what about Pulumi? So um, let's first start with um, ARM. Right, which is the Azure native way of deploying infrastructure as code. So ARM stands for Azure Resource Manager. And when you're deploying infrastructure, you're actually just talking to a REST API at the very bottom that will deploy your VMs, your virtual networks, etc. So ARM templates are JSON templates. And the JSON is kind of readable. Like I can read ARM, but I can't write ARM. And um, that's because ARM really is for machines, right? It's Java script object notation. And that was one of the reasons why I was actually attracted to Terraform. So Terraform is written in a domain specific language or DSL. And this one is called HashiCorp language or HCL. And it just was much easier to read. Um, I could easily put in comments. Um, and I could also use um, modules um, for reuse, like pieces of code. Um, that is even today so much easier to do in Terraform. Um, than it is in ARM. So uh, Terraform is also worth mentioning is cloud agnostic, right? It's not just for Azure. You can also deploy to AWS or even on-prem, apparently, as I recently learned. Um, and uh, yeah, I just like the DSL like much more. Um, there are some people who say, well, the DSL is not enough. I want to write my infrastructure as code in code, like native code. So like JavaScript or Python, et cetera. And that's how, uh, it's my understanding, I'm not an expert and I don't use Pulumi, but that's how Pulumi came about. So Pulumi lets you write your infrastructure uh, in JavaScript or Python. The interesting thing about Pulumi from what I can gather is that it piggies back on certain technologies like Terraform um, when it can leverage it, right? Like why build something from scratch if somebody's already built something great and it is open source. So it's like, you know, totally legit to do. Um, there are some things in Pulumi which will talk directly to a cloud provider's um, REST API. So all three, right, are talking to the same um, Azure uh, Resource Manager API under the hood in some form or other, either directly or, you know, via uh, Terraform. And um, you kind of just sort of pick like, okay, what flavor of infrastructure as code do you like? What are you sort of most comfortable with? Ultimately, Everything is just kind of an abstraction and you pick the one that's most comfortable for you. And the interesting thing is that um, these things change over time, right? So if somebody realizes, oh, that's a good idea, people like that, I'm gonna change and copy them. So at Microsoft, we are working on something called Bicep. It's public, you can see it in GitHub. I don't think people have really sort of announced it. But uh, yeah, so the idea that people don't want to write machine language, JSON is machine language, like caught on. And so there's a new language called Bicep, arm and bicep, get it? Ha ha. Um, so it's on my to-do actually to learn and check out this quarter um, to learn Bicep. So it's a DSL um, and Microsoft has also built in uh, what ifs for deployments. And the what ifs lets you do sort of uh, configuration comparisons to what you already have deployed. So similar to what Terraform plan can do. Um, the interesting thing is that ARM doesn't need a state file in order to be able to do that. But um, yeah, the point I wanted to make is sort of, okay, um, Microsoft and Azure said, okay, we're gonna catch up. We're gonna jump on the DSL train as well. We're gonna call our language uh, Bicep. And the interesting thing is that last year, so last summer, 2020, uh, Terraform, or rather HashiCorp, announced that they're going to jump on the code native train. So they released the um, code development kit for Terraform, which basically lets people uh, create um, infrastructure using JavaScript and Python. So I think this is like in preview or alpha or something. Um, but the point is that the companies have really indicated they are, you know, going to where the users are, what the users want. And if enough people sort of say, we want this, then the incumbents like Microsoft or HashiCorp, um, yeah, they will accommodate to that. So Pulumi is relatively new um, in terms of how I personally feel about it. I kind of love the idea of writing 
infrastructure in a code native way. Like I sometimes miss um, things like logical operators, like ifs or sort of loops, uh, which you can kind of do in Terraform, but not quite. Um, and some of the things you can do conditionals and ARM as well, it's kind of weird. But if you're saying, oh, how do you do that in JavaScript? Like I know how to do that, right? Off the top of my head, I don't have to learn some new skill. So that's kind of cool, that's kind of exciting. Um, and the reason why all of that works, right? It's just an abstraction, it generates, you know, other bits of code that talks to the REST API. So all of this is kind of possible. Um, you have lots and lots of options, basically, like, so for whatever flavor you like in terms of code, I guess, although I'm not gonna get into, into this video because this was a kind of like an ask me anything answer. Um, what you wanna do is then do a deep dive comparison of the three te different technologies and sort of where there might be an Achilles heel for you or like some sort of requirement that you won't satisfy. And so I mentioned Achilles heel because one thing that people really don't like about Terraform is that its state file is in plain text. It's not encrypted by default. So on Azure, you would put that state file in the blob storage account. And obviously the account is protected, right? So the, the blob is not publicly accessible, neither for reading nor for writing. Um, and although the file itself is plain text, obviously it's stored on Azure, like encrypted. So I use it. I mean, I don't know, I trust myself. I trust how I configure my storage account. So the fact that it's in plain text doesn't really bother me so much. Like you shouldn't be looking at it anyway. It's just something that's sort of saved somewhere. Um, so Pulumi also has a state file um, and their state file is encrypted. So people see that as kind of like an, like an added advantage. Um, do some Googling, right, about the differences between Terraform and Pulumi. I did it a little bit briefly and then people definitely said, I think it was, I read on Reddit or Stack Overflow, that Terraform state files are much more easy to repair than um, Pulumi. I know Terraform, you can import resources. I actually don't know if Pulumi can do that. Um, or if it can only create sort of resources. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, I think, one major uh, advantage for Pulumi over um, Terraform. Um, and you might think, oh, Azure doesn't have any state file or ARM doesn't have any state file that's even better. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> one of the things I like about Terraform, sometimes if I screw something up, I can do a Terraform destroy and just kill everything, right? Um, so it cleans everything up for you. Um, Azure doesn't do that, right? Or ARM doesn't do that rather. Um, that's one of, these, one of the reasons why we have Azure resource groups because they're logical containers um, that are grouped by generally by life cycles. You can just kill the resource group and all that stuff is gone. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think those are the main differences. So in 2021, right? Like I think the biggest thing to be aware of is that Microsoft and HashiCorp are catching up. They're jumping on those different trains. So Microsoft is now adding its own DSL to ARM and HashiCorp is also adding the Cloud Development Kit to introduce uh, code native uh, templates for infrastructure as code. Um, so all that is, yeah, changing and uh, Pulumi is still the kind of the newish kid on the block. Check it out. Um, last thing, in case I didn't mention it yet, is that uh, Pulumi is funded. So maybe you don't care, it's something I care about, but um, they've taken, I think, like 50 or 60 million. Um, yeah, in funding. So up to you. Decide whether or not that's important. Um, yeah. So if you like this sort of answer, again, it's the ask me anything type of format. Let me know. Give this video a like. Uh, if you want more details, like a more sort of deep dive, uh, let me know as well. Then I'll spend more time doing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, please subscribe. Uh, send me questions. I'm happy to do these types of videos if you like them. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.